Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Julian Gray, director of the Southwest Coast Path Association, the charity that champions England's longest national trail. I'm speaking from the Rain Peninsula in southeast Cornwall, and today the G7 has started down in Carbis Bay. So I'd like to give you a Cornish welcome to you all, Canal, Agas, Denerg, and warmly welcome you all to the Southwest Coast Path Forum 2021. This is the second of three online events we're hosting today. So welcome back to those of you who joined us for the World Seven, uh, the World Trails G7 Forum earlier. And we're looking forward to our AGM later this afternoon. I'll start with a bit of virtual housekeeping. We're running the forum as a webinar and there are differences in how this looks to a standard video conference. Firstly, you can't see yourselves and you'll be on mute. However, there are two ways of engaging with us and other participants. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see two icons for chat and Q&A. And if you want to try the chat function now to introduce yourselves and comment through the session, it's good to see that people are using that chat function. Uh, the ask question function works in the same way and should be used to ask panelists specific questions during the Q&A session at the end. And please note this webinar is being recorded and will be made available afterwards. So the aim of today's forum is to bring together people who help create and sustain one of the world's great trails. It's great to see representation from many different organizations joining us today. And our geography traversing 630 miles around the Southwest means we're the canary in the coal mine when it comes to the impact of climate change with increasing frequency and strength of storms. We've seen investment in the National Trail increase significantly since 2013 through the work of the Southwest Coast Path Trail Partnership. However, we're only just holding the line in terms of the quality of trail infrastructure. As with many trails around the world, the pandemic has shone a light on people's access to nature and also the connection between environment, local economy and people's health and well-being. Being stuck indoors for half a year has refocused just how much the natural, natural environment, walking and nature means to people and how important it is, it is for their mental and physical uh, health, well-being. Our latest research shows over £75 million in physical health benefits from people walking the trail. And management issues of popular sites along the coast path and wider countryside have been a challenge and we need to improve engagement with people visiting the coast and countryside to ensure it's loved and cared for and we leave, it, leave only a light footprint. So in 2019, over 8.9 million people visited the coast path, generating £520 million to the local economy and supporting over 10,000 jobs. The pandemic also revealed how important the coast path is to our tourism and hospitality economy, and likewise how much the hospitality sector is part of the coast path experience, giving a warm welcome to visitors, the joys of local provenance, experiences along the trail, and a comfortable night after a long day's walk. In the face of this dreadful pandemic, there's been a great collaboration, positivity and resilience, and our opportunity is to harness this, this energy to help each other on the path to recovery as we face new challenges ahead. Working in partnership, we can use a trail corridor to drive environmental growth, sustainable local economies, equity of access and connecting people with nature to help mitigate and adapt an ever changing world and ensure the coast path remains an important part of people's lives. To help us navigate today's ambitious agenda, we've drawn together a combination of presentations and short films, which we rounded off with an open forum for you to ask questions of the panelists. And with great pleasure, I'd like to welcome our panelists who join us to share their broad knowledge and experience and uh, help identify how we meet future challenges. With the packed agenda uh, over the next hour, we're going to let the panelists introduce themselves at the start of their presentations. So without further ado, I'd like to start the forum and hand you over to the first of our panelists, Helen Dobby. Uh, 